thanks for watching this. So why is this research important? Why does it matter? Animal nutrition still uses around 7 million tons of organic phosphorus each year. And each of these tons is emitting around 750 kilograms of CO2. While in most of the diets there is more than enough phytase phosphorus present. So this leads to unnecessary phosphorus pollution and CO2 emissions. Young animal diets with a high demand for bioavailable phosphorus are the hardest to formulate inorganic phosphor free diets for. Others have made steps toward this, but until now it remained unachievable. The last phytase frontier was to fully replace all inorganic phosphate in a commercial vegetable broiler diet starting from day one and maintain performance and animal welfare. This is exactly why we are inspired to demonstrate this could be done with the novel Consensus 6 phytase variant in a collaboration with Texas A&M and Wagen University. So the objective of the study is to look if the total replacement of inorganic phosphorus in all feeding phases is possible. Of course, while ensuring normal growth, characteristics and bone strength. We used a novel Consensus Bacterial 6 phytase variant. This is based on Botticella and screened for a broad pH profile, high intrinsic thermostability, superior breakdown of phytate and the phytate protein complexes, faster hydrolysis in the acidic part of the gastrointestinal tract, and is on the market under the trade name XFI Gold. So what was our approach? To start with, we ensured there was enough phytate phosphorus available by using feed ingredients rich in phosphorus which are commonly used in the feed industry. Also, we aimed at a high efficient phytase with at least 85-90% to 90 of IP6 degradation. We optimized our calcium levels based on calcium solubility and we added a small percentage of oat hulls to ensure good gizzard development. We tested several phase specific phytase dosing strategies. The basic trial design of our two independent trials looked as follows. Each of the trials had five treatments with each 10 replicates. We used ROS 3 or 8 birds, within the first trials we used exactly 50% male, 50% female in each pen, and in the second trial we used only males. The positive control was nutrient adequate but not over specified. We used four phase feedings, so 1 to 10, 10 to 21, 21 to 35, and 35 to 42 days. We used a complex diet with corn, wheat, soybean meal, rapeseed meal, wheat and rice bran. Typical phytase levels were 0.33 to 0.35% and all feeds are fed as a pellet. This table shows in more detail the setup of the experiment. The positive control of course, there was no phytase present and the other treatments, different phytase dosing strategies are shown. Inorganic phosphor free diet 1 and 2, there was a thousand FTUs from beginning to end. Treatment number three and four, there was a dosing strategy starting high phytase dose in the beginning, so in the starter and the grower feed, going down to a thousand FTU in the finisher feed. For all inorganic phosphor free treatments, a downspec for calcium was used of 0.2 to 0.3%. On top of that, treatment number four, there was an energy downspec use for 71 kilogram per kilogram. IPF2 had the full matrix downspec for extra fire use, so also including a downspec for sodium and amino acids. In this table, the most important ranges are shown in the diet formulation for the different treatments, so including the positive control and the different phases. And the phases are the starter, the grower, the finisher one and the finisher two. On the right side of this table, you see the most important nutrients. On the left side, you see the raw material ranges. One of the advantages of a digital conference is that you can pause the video now to look at the table in more detail. In this table, the most important ranges are shown for trial 2. Again on the right, the most important nutrients and on the left, the most important raw material ranges are shown, including the positive control. Formulating diet is one. But of course you need to check if what we formulated is also actually what we are feeding the animals. So for this, we checked the most important parameters of the diets we tested. 
for all the different phases. We used proximity analysis for fat, fiber, starch, and we did also calculated energy. All of these were within 5% of the calculated values for all the different phases and all the different treatments. The only deviation was calcium with a little bit higher deviation, which is actually not an uncommon analysis issue. The limestone we used had a very high solubility and we adjusted our levels accordingly. We saw the same pattern with trial two. All of the parameters we analyzed were within 5% of the calculated values with the exception of calcium, which had a little higher uh, deviation. So what did we measure? As an indicator for performance, we looked at body weight, the feed conversion, but also the carcass yields. As an indicator for phosphorus availability, we looked at bone ash and the bone breaking strength at the end of the experiment. And we calculated the impact on profitability by calculating the feed cost per kilogram of body weight gain at the end of the experiment for all the different treatments. On the statistics, as an experimental unit for the performance, we used the pen level. And for the bone ash in trial one, we used four individual birds per pen. And for trial two, we pooled four birds per pen. The bone strength for both trial one and two were based on four individual birds per pen. And we used Tukey's test using jump. To start with, let's look at the bone breaking strength at the end of the experiment. This table shows the bone breaking strength in kilogram force across the two trials. What we can see is that compared to the positive control, all of the treatments at least remained the same bone breaking strength. And the two high dosing strategies, IPF3 and 4, even had a statistical significant higher bone breaking strength compared to the positive control. Also, there was no significant impact on bone ash. And with 60 birds per treatment, which we tested on carcass yield, there was no negative effect of all of the inorganic phosphor treatments compared to the positive control on carcass yield. If you look at the body weight as an indicator for performance, this graph shows the body weights for the first trial with the mixed sex and which we show the breeder objectives as the first column and then the positive control and the four different treatments. What you can see is there is no difference between the positive control and any of the inorganic phosphor free treatments. We see the same trend with trial number two, with only male broilers. But here we see also that IPF1, 3 and 4 are significant better from day 21 onwards compared to the positive control. IPF2, which has a full matrix down spec and is the most cost economic option, maintained equal performance in all ages compared to the positive control. When we look at the feed conversion ratios, all inorganic phosphor free treatments are comparable to positive control and meeting the breeders' objectives. The best FCR was observed with the high phytase dosing strategies in treatment number three and four. When we look at trial number two with only male broilers, we see the same trend. The feed conversion ratio of all the treatments are comparable to the positive control. However, treatment number one and three showed lower feed conversions compared to the positive control. So based on these results, we concluded that for all inorganic phosphor feed treatments across these two trials, they were at least comparable to the positive control and meeting the beaches objectives. Economics are very important in broiler production. This is also why we looked at the feed cost per kilogram of body weight gain. This graph shows across the two trials the feed cost per kilogram of body weight compared to the positive control. And what you can see is that all of the inorganic phosphate feed treatments are more economic than keeping inorganic phosphate in. This means that replacing inorganic phosphate in all phases is also very economic. To summarize, we showed that for the new consensus bacterial 6 phytase variant, all inorganic phosphor free treatments are able to maintain performance in all the phases and are better or equal than the breeders' objectives. All inorganic phosphor free treatments maintain bone ash and carcass weight compared to positive control. Also, the high dosing strategies and or in combination with the xylanase improve performance, so meaning body weight gain and feed conversions and bone strength compared to positive control. And to top it all off, all of these treatments were more cost effective compared to keeping 
inorganic phosphate in. To conclude, as a first, we have shown that it is possible to replace all inorganic phosphorus in all diet phases from start to finish, and still maintaining normal growth and healthy animals. If you have questions or remarks, please do not hesitate to contact us.